Uh, yeah, so first of all, uh, uh, there are uh, copies of lecture notes from what I said yesterday. And uh, uh, also yesterday I made a mess out of discussion of almost invariant vectors. So there is a, a correct version uh, of uh, correct proof here. So if you like to read correct proof, it's not. Uh, uh, but let's uh, continue with uh, what we started last time. So last time I introduced uh, uh, property T, or so-called uh, Cardan property T. So, so really uh, all the discussion about uh, uh, all the theorems regarding Cardan property T are due to uh, Cardan. Uh, uh, so. Um, uh, okay, and uh, and we were in the process of proving uh, this theorem. So we would like to show that SLNR and at least three uh, has property T. Okay, so uh, so what precisely do we have to prove? Uh, so we have to show that if pi uh, uh, we have a, a representation of uh, uh, SLNR, a unitary representation. Uh, uh, without uh, uh, G uh, fixed vectors, uh, you want to show that uh, uh, this property holds. So, so, so what do I have to uh, show? I have to uh, show that there exists a compact set uh, K and epsilon positive uh, such that uh, uh, if I have such a representation, then uh, if I uh, multiply every unit vector by G, then the displacement would be at least epsilon. So if you like, it's a, uh, well, if you like to say it in words, it's a, uh, it's a quantitative version of not having a, a G fixed vector. Uh, okay, so, uh, and, uh, and the trick is to uh, consider uh, uh, a semi product. So I'm going to consider a semi product of uh, SL to R, uh, with R2, which is uh, embedded in SLN R in, in the obvious way, and uh, I denote this group by G uh, and uh, this group by A. And uh, uh, what we uh, did last time, uh, so last time uh, uh, we uh, uh, recalled uh, 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 the notion of uh, spectral measure, and because A is a billion, so we can actually uh, well, they analyze it in a suitable sense. So, so the operator. Uh, sorry. Uh, actually, yes, yes, uh, yesterday I wrote uh, rho, but uh, I should have written pi. So, so pi uh, pi of a. This operator can be uh, they analyzed in a suitable sense. So this means uh, uh, that uh, it can be written as an integral. PU, uh, where uh, a P uh, is a, a projection valued uh, measure. So it's a map from a uh, Borel subsets of R2 to uh, uh, projections on H. And, uh, and uh, yesterday we also observed uh, that uh, uh, this projection uh, Valued measure has uh, the following uh, equivariance uh, property. So if we uh, uh, conjugate it, if we conjugate this projection valued measure, we get another projection valued well, well, uh, measure. Uh, but uh, this measure would be uh, uh, just the push forward of initial measure by the map uh, uh, G transpose. G transpose uh, applied to U. Right, so here U is in R2. So, so there is this uh, uh, nice equivalence property. Okay, so, uh, uh, so now uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, fix uh, a K, uh, uh, which would be a, a compact uh, uh, generating set. Of, uh, of G, SL to R. Uh, and I, I claim that uh, uh, for suitable uh, epsilon, uh, this set K would work. Uh, and uh, the proof goes by contradiction. So it's not really constructive, but uh, uh, 
Uh, so so uh, let's suppose that it doesn't work. So suppose that uh, there exists a sequence of uh, uh, unit vectors uh, uh, with the property that uh, Uh, this displacement uh, 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 goes uh, to zero as m goes to infinity. So I want to show that if, if I show that uh, if I get a contradiction, then it would be done. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, so yeah. So what we can do now uh, uh, to the sequence of unit vectors, we can associate a sequence of measures on R two. In, uh, in an obvious way, uh, using uh, uh, the projection valued measure. So, so I'm going to define by uh, u sub n of b. Uh, this would be uh, uh, just uh, p of b, b n, uh, b n. So b is a Borel subset of uh, R2. Uh, so this is a uh, 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 measure. Two. Okay, and uh, uh, so now let's see what this equivalence property tells us uh, uh, for uh, this measure. So, uh, so now if I uh, 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 so if I write uh, uh, so, so I'm claiming that this equivalence property would uh, uh, tell me that uh, the measure is uh, the sequence of measure is somehow almost invariant. So, so say if I apply, uh, uh, so let's consider this difference. So this is uh, uh, the same uh, as uh, or maybe let's write it explicitly. Oh, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. So it's. Uh, 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 then uh, uh, pi g is unitary, so I can move it to the other side. So, so it really becomes a uh, difference uh, in the form. Assuming we are assuming uh, uh, that uh, phi uh, g uh, v n uh, uh, converges uh, to v n, and uh, uh, phi of b is an orthogonal projection, so somehow it doesn't uh, really spoil uh, any of the convergence properties. So if you uh, uh, well, just leave it as an exercise to see that uh, uh, this uh, difference would also uh, go to zero. As m goes to infinity, so so I'm getting the sequence of measures on R2, which is uh, uh, asymptotically invariant under uh, uh, yeah. So here, uh, I guess I'm assuming uh, so, so pick g uh, g in k in this compact. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah. So now uh, uh, what we can do with the sequence of measure is to uh, uh, build the sequence of measure on uh, on the projective line uh, on the set of lines in R2 so uh, so maybe one, one first important observation uh, in order to do it would be uh, to see that uh, uh, so uh, uh, there is no atoms at zero so uh, so let's uh, uh, suppose that uh, uh, so let's say if we get that mu of uh, n uh, uh, of zero is zero, uh, is, sorry, is not zero. So if there is an atom uh, at zero, so so then uh, 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 p of uh, zero also is non-zero. But if there is an atom for 
uh, this spectral measure, then uh, this would imply that uh, uh, this corresponding operator has uh, has an eigenvalue of zero. So uh, uh, so this would tell us that there, uh, there is a, a non-trivial uh, uh, A-invariant uh, vector. So there exists an A-invariant vector. Uh, okay, so uh, so in principle uh, uh, this might happen, but luckily, uh, thanks to uh, Furman, we know that uh, uh, well, we know more ergodicity theorem. Which, uh, well, I, I, actually I'm not sure what was the formulation in his lecture, but one uh, way to formulate it would be to say if there is uh, no uh, uh, no uh, G fixed vectors uh, uh, in a unitary representation uh, implies uh, that there is no fixed vectors for any non compact uh, subgroup of G. So, in particular, uh, no uh, A fixed vector. Do you remember more of the theorem or some version of it? It was stated as how more and the ergodicity is just a corollary. Ah, yeah. We've seen that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. So so uh, so now uh, uh, we see uh, we see that uh, well this cannot happen. So so indeed uh, uh, so hence we uh, uh, know that mu n uh, of Zero is uh, zero, and so uh, so we can consider mu n as measures on R two minus zero. So uh, so now we have uh, R two minus zero, uh, and then of course we have natural projection on the set of lines on projective line, uh, and then here we have a sequence of measure mu n and. Uh, uh, taking image under this projection, we get the sequence of measures on the projective line. And uh, uh, well, and the nice thing is that the projective line is compact, so uh, so so, uh, so we can apply. Uh, uh, so, so, so so then the set of measures on P1 is also compact, and so uh, so then we know that, that by uh, by compactness uh, after passing to a subsequence, uh, this uh, sequence of measures would converge to another measure. Uh, so this would be a probability measure on the projective line. And, and moreover, uh, uh, somehow, uh, well, uh, so this really nice map, and so the property uh, for UNs would be inherited by the property, uh, uh, would be inherited by the measures on the projective line. So, so we also know that uh, uh, this measure uh, mu bar is uh, uh, k invariant, but because k generates uh, uh, g, so it's actually g invariant. So, uh, so what we got in the end, we constructed a g invariant uh, 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 probability measure on the project, uh, projective line, which is nonsense. We already know that uh, such measure does not exist. So, uh, so we get a contradiction. And so, uh, so we are done. Yeah. How did how do you did, did you deduce that uh, it's G invariant? Well, uh, because of this property. Ah, ah, because yeah, because so, the limit of the divide. Yeah, yeah. Because as you see, as n goes to infinity, so, so this is for Borel sets in R two. But of course, uh, here you just take Borel sets on projective line and you, you pull them back and. But uh, here G is in K. Yeah, so, so G is in K, so, so okay, so, so originally you get that for G in K, uh, so it's invariant for G in K, but K uh, generates G, so ah, K is, uh, uh, yeah, so it's a compact generating set. This idea to denote it by, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so this is really SLNR. Uh, 
Yeah, so what does it say actually? Uh, because, yeah, in <coughs> principle, uh, right, so, so you're saying that uh, the epsilon might depend on the representation. Yeah, so, so I think I, I have to say a little bit more. So, so, so the representation uh, would not assume to be irreducible. So yeah, yeah, I can take uh, kind of a. So if, if there is a sequence of representations, then I can take a direct sum of them. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, I think that's a very good point. I have to say more. Of it. Because uh, somehow, if, uh, right, if it's really a sequence of representations for which uh, uh, somehow Cardan property fails, then I can take direct sum and apply it to, to this direct sum of the representations. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so, uh, uh, yeah, so now let's uh, uh, come back to our initial goal to uh, understand uh, lattices in SLNR. And so, of course, uh, what we would like to see is that uh, uh, we would like to see that uh, the Cardan property is inherited uh, by lattices. So, uh, yeah, so here is uh, uh, indeed the case. So, so say if we have uh, uh, G, uh, which is a uh, uh, property T. gamma is going to be a lattice, uh, then uh, uh, it claims that gamma uh, also has uh, property T. Okay, so, uh, uh, yeah, so somehow in, in order uh, to prove uh, such a theorem, uh, one should uh, uh, learn how to uh, uh, relate representations of gamma with representations of G. And uh, so that's a really very nice uh, and standard construction, which is called induced representation. So say we have uh, pi, which is a unitary representation of uh, uh, gamma. Right, and uh, so now uh, I'm going. I would like to build uh, uh, a, a representation of uh, G. Uh, so gamma is a lattice uh, here. So so what I can do, I can uh, cons well actually it doesn't need to be a lattice. It works uh, in general. So uh, so I consider a space H hat, uh, which is a set of all measurable functions from G to H. Uh, with the property that uh, f gamma g is equal to uh, pi of gamma f g uh, almost everywhere uh, for gamma in gamma. And uh, uh, also, uh, uh, I assume, uh, so if I look on the norm of f g, so, uh, so pi of g is unitary, so it's actually a function on uh, g factor gamma. And so if I integrate uh, <coughs> g factor gamma, I'm assuming that uh, this integral is fine. So it's like, uh, uh, in some sense, it's an analog of a two space, uh, but uh, in some more, more general setting. So, so in, in particular, uh, 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 one can uh, define a, a nice scalar product on this set of functions. So, so this, this becomes a, a Hilbert space in a natural way. And uh, we can also define, uh, uh, define a representation uh, pi, so from g to uh, uh, unitary group of h. Uh, so pi uh, hat g. Um, so it maps function f to function f of x times g. 
Okay, so uh, uh, so now uh, so now we are ready for uh, uh, for the proof. So uh, well, actually, uh, uh, maybe just to uh, uh, make life a little uh, simple for me, uh, uh, let's assume that uh, uh, G factor gamma is uh, compact. Uh, uh, so, so uh, I mean, uh, in general, one needs to do additional steps. So you pick a, a, a big compact set which exhausts uh, the measure of G factor gamma. But uh, let, let's don't worry. Uh, let's not worry about it. So let's assume that it's compact. Uh, and so then, uh, uh, what I'm going to do, I am uh, uh, going to uh, write uh, a G. Uh, so I pick uh, a kind of a tile C and uh, and write. Uh, a G as a disjoint union of tiles uh, over gamma. So, so C here is uh, is a bounded uh, Borel uh, subset of G. So one can always pick such a set. So it's like a fundamental domain. And it's called fundamental domain for for the action of gamma. Okay, and then uh, if I have an element G in G, uh, so it's convenient to have notation. So, so G can be decomposed uniquely as a product of some element G of gamma in gamma and element C in, uh, in C. So, uh, so now I would like to claim that uh, uh, gamma has Kajdan property T. So, um, so, so let's say uh, a p pi, uh, which is uh, some unitary representation. And uh, so, uh, so if uh, it doesn't have property T, then uh, 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 so, uh, so no uh, property T, T implies uh, that uh, 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 there exists, uh, uh, well, for every finite uh, S in gamma, uh, there exists a sequence uh, Vn of unit vectors uh, such that uh, For, uh, for gamma uh, goes to zero for uh, for gamma in S. Um, okay, so now uh, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, um, uh, to consider uh, induced representation. So uh, so I'm going to take uh, so somehow I, I want to get a contradiction and show that. Uh, uh, the group G uh, itself, uh, or, or at least use the G has property T and then uh, get uh, something interesting out of it. So, so take uh, any, uh, any compact uh, K in G. So, uh, uh, so, so now uh, what I'm going to, uh, to do is, uh, yeah, so I think it should be K times so, uh, so k times c, uh, so it's a product of two bounded sets. So, uh, so in particular, uh, it's bounded, and so, uh, so then, uh, uh, because gamma is discrete, uh, you can cover this bounded set by but by uh, by finitely many tiles like this. So you can't have uh, infinitely many tiles intersecting bounded sets. So, so then, uh, uh, it's actually contained in the product of s uh, times uh, c. For uh, for some uh, s uh, finite in gamma, and uh, using that, I would like to uh, show that there exists a sequence of almost invariant vectors uh, for the induced representation. So, uh, so one way to build such a sequence would be to say. 
uh, okay, so, uh, so take uh, fm g, uh, which is, uh, so I take g decomposite like this, and then I just uh, get gamma g times, uh, times vm. So, uh, uh, so this is a function from g to h, and also uh, one can check that it satisfies uh, this equivalence property, uh, and uh, yeah, so, uh, so, so indeed, indeed it's a function on h hat. Uh, it's, it's an element in h hat. Uh, and so, uh, so now I'm claiming that uh, this sequence uh, of events gives me an example of a sequence of almost invariant vectors for uh, g acting on h hat. Well, so, so let's check uh, that this is true. Uh, so, uh, so I want to uh, look on pi hat um, g applied to fn minus Normal of this thing squared. So this is uh, by definition, uh, well, so it's uh, an integral over g factor gamma, but uh, maybe it's more convenient to write it as an integral over, uh, over the fundamental domain, over the set C. So then uh, this becomes uh, norm of fn C g minus fn C. So I have this, and uh, uh, I use the definition of fn, so this becomes uh, an integral over c, norm of uh, pi gamma cg. Uh, yeah, so gamma cg. Uh, Vn minus uh, Vn. Uh, so, uh, uh, so here I'm taking uh, G. Uh, so here uh, G would be in, uh, in K. And so what I would like to get is, uh, yeah, so now let's check if I uh, put things in the right order. So it's, uh, 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 so C is still there. So, uh, so the only thing that I did, I, I just uh, uh, wrote, uh, wrote uh, the definition of function uh, fn. So function fn is a function which only depends on the c component of g. So, uh, right, so, so fn of c would be just vn, and uh, fn of c, cg would be, uh, would be just phi uh, of g uh, gamma component uh, of this times vn. Uh, yeah, and I think I actually uh, should write it in the other order because I really uh, want to have, uh, uh, so it has to be C times K. It doesn't really matter. But, uh, uh, so, uh, so, so, so now uh, 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 what I have arranged uh, is that, uh, well, so, so this uh, element here belongs uh, uh, to the finite set S. And so, uh, so we pick a sequence of vectors Vn, which corresponds uh, to this finite set S. And, uh, and then uh, 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 what we know is that uh, 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 this expression converges uh, to, uh, uh, to zero. So, so what we have showed is that uh, uh, for, every, uh, for every compact set, uh, there exists a sequence of vectors uh, Fn, uh, where uh, uh, this displacement goes to zero. Right, so, uh, but uh, we also know that G has Kajdan property T. So, so, so G, uh, uh, G uh, has property T. <coughs> T implies uh, that there exists uh, uh, G invariant vector in each hat. And, uh, so, uh, so this uh, G invariant vector uh, almost everywhere would be uh, a constant. It would be some uh, remote in H. So this is uh, almost everywhere. 
and uh, but it's it's also it's also gamma equivariant, right? So so we know that this f uh, has to satisfy. Uh, uh, so we also know that f gamma g is uh, phi gamma g almost everywhere. So so ultimately we get uh, that uh, uh, phi uh, gamma. Uh, uh, v naught is equal to v naught. So, so indeed, if uh, uh, we have uh, almost invariant, uh, uh, well, so, so say if you assume that uh, uh, there is no fixed vector, we get the contradiction, or the other way around, uh, to say, uh, Uh, but the way uh, the way how uh, G uh, acts, right? So so uh, so, so, uh, so G acts transitively on uh, on the base. Um, uh, so, yeah. Should F F be pi of gamma G? Yeah. Then yes, yes. Pi of gamma G. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, so, so now we actually know that uh, lattices in uh, uh, in SLM R and at least three have uh, uh, Kirchhoff property T. So, so that's uh, uh, very nice. So uh, 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 yeah, so, so now we can also get uh, a nice uh, information about uh, uh, about. Uh, uh, group theoretic properties of uh, lattices uh, in Kazdan groups or, uh, for example, lattices in SNR. So, so I think it was uh, actually the main motivation why Kazdan uh, uh, introduced this property. So uh, here is another uh, theorem. Say, if you know that gamma is a, a discrete, uh, discrete group, uh, and uh, gamma has uh, property T. Uh, this implies uh, that uh, gamma is uh, finitely generated. OK, so let's see how, how we uh, Get it. Uh, so um, okay, so uh, so we are going to consider uh, uh, the following uh, uh, direct sum. So sum over delta L two uh, gamma delta. Let's call it H, where uh, delta runs over all uh, finitely generated subgroups of gamma. So delta. Is, uh, So, uh, so now, uh, 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 if you think about it, uh, uh, it's almost obvious uh, that uh, this, uh, well, and, yeah, so of course gamma naturally acts on this direct sum, so it's the structure of Gilbert space, etc. cetera. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so, so now, uh, 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 gamma, uh, so, uh, so, th uh, so there are almost invariant vectors, because you see, uh, uh, for, every, uh, for every finite, S uh, inside gamma, uh, we can we can consider characteristic function of uh, the identity coset uh, of the group uh, uh, generated by S. So uh, so it's naturally an uh, element in one of those guys and element in the direct sum, and so uh, so this belongs to H, and it's also clear that uh, this. Uh, 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 element is L S invariant. So, yes, 
S in radian. So for every finite uh, set, uh, 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 there exists an S invariant uh, uh, vector. So, so now by Kajdan property T, uh, we get uh, that uh, uh, this uh, representation uh, must contain uh, an invariant vector. So by property T, uh, uh, there exists uh, 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 gamma invariant vector. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so then if we decompose it uh, in this direct sum, there would be at least one component which is, uh, which is non-trivial. And so, uh, so, so we deduce uh, that there exists uh, delta such that L2 of uh, gamma delta contains uh, invariant vector. But uh, how could this be? So, so because we are talking about square integrable functions, so the only way how this could happen is that uh, uh, if uh, gamma factor delta is fine, so, uh, so we are done. So, so indeed, uh, 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 we have a finitely generated subgroup which has finite index in gamma. So, uh, yeah, so somehow uh, it's quite, uh, it seems quite a uh, nice way to uh, say something, uh, some algebraic, uh, to, to deduce some algebraic properties of gamma from using representations here. So it's really, uh, really cool argument. Well, so far we are covering uh, prerequisites, but uh, well, there is uh, uh, well. So the next step would be to uh, uh, to give an outline of the proof, but then there is also another non-trivial step, which is characterization of projective uh, uh, factors of the uh, flag variety. So, so I'll, I'll make it precise. But, but uh, if you assume uh, that you know how to classify uh, gamma equivariant factors of G factor uh, Borel then uh, we are actually almost done. So there is another uh, non-trivial step which uh, goes in the other uh, direction. Uh, yeah, so, so far, uh, what I've done so far, I just uh, 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 covered from scratch the notion of amenability and property T, which is crucial in the proof. And uh, now I can give uh, almost a complete proof modulo uh, so-called factor theorem, and then I'm going to prove a factor theorem. Uh, but, but this is not, I mean, this theorem is not really needed in the... No, no, it's uh, just, just a few... Just Yeah, just a few, uh, since we already talked about uh, property T, so it's uh, really like a, a low dying fruit once we have the tools. <laughs> yeah, so in particular, uh, uh, as I just mentioned that, uh, so since uh, we know that... Uh, 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 lattice is an SLNR, so if you have gamma, uh, the lattice uh, in uh, SLNR and is at least 3, uh, then uh, this result shows that gamma is uh, finitely generated. Yeah, yeah so, so, so basically, uh, uh, now I covered uh, prerequisites for the proof of Margulis normal subgroup theorem, and uh, uh, we can start uh, with uh, attempting the proof. So, so any questions about uh, uh, property T? Uh, because now we are going to uh, move on to, to other stuff. So let's recall uh, what I'm trying to prove. So, so this is uh, the 
say we have gamma, uh, which is a lattice in epsilon r, n is at least 3, and uh, say we have n, which is a normal subgroup in gamma. So then uh, uh, the claim is that n, uh, then n is uh, finite. Or gamma factor n is fine. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah so, so this case is uh, quite easy uh, to classify what those uh, finite groups are. Uh, that's more interesting, so it's related to, uh, in some cases, it's related to congruence uh, suburb problem. Uh, yeah. There is description. In some cases, what those groups are as well. Okay, so uh, uh, so now uh, let's recall what was uh, the plan. So the plan was uh, uh, to uh, uh, so say we have n, which is normal in gamma and uh, infinite. So then uh, uh, so our proposal was to show that uh, gamma factor n uh, is amenable. And gamma factor n has uh, property t. And we already uh, proved uh, that uh, if one and two holds, uh, then gamma factor n uh, is fine. So it would be done. Uh, uh, so, uh, so we just have to check that one and two is true. So actually, second property uh, is immediate from what we already did because you see. If uh, you know that a group has property T, then its factor group also has property T because uh, representations of a factor group is a subset of representations of uh, the group. So, so actually this simply follows uh, because we know that uh, gamma has property T. Okay, so uh, so more difficult part is to show that gamma factor N is a minimum. So, uh, so now I have to recall again uh, the definition of amenability. Uh, so uh, uh, to say we have V, which is uh, some uh, locally convex uh, logical vector space and uh, omega is going to be uh, non-empty uh, compact uh, convex uh, subset and then we have G uh, action on, uh, acts on uh, omega so this is a linear continuous action means uh, that uh, uh, for any such situation there is a fixed point uh, so what we have to show is that there is a fixed uh, uh, a g fixed uh, uh, point in omega that's what we have to show um, so this is uh, our aim um, well unfortunately g is not amenable so uh, of course uh, uh, or, uh, sorry, so, so I want to show that gamma factor n. Uh, 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 yeah, so, so, so we are looking on, uh, right, we want to show that gamma factor n is a minimum. That's what we want to, uh, to prove. So, uh, and so it's, it's not obvious why it why should, should be uh, why, uh, should, uh, it's, uh, uh, point exist, uh, uh, but at least uh, uh, what we can do, uh, uh, so we can uh, start by looking, so instead of looking for a fixed point, we can try something easier and to look for uh, kind of gamma equivalent maps uh, and see if we can uh, somehow start with gamma equivalent maps and then build our way uh, uh, to, to a fixed point. So, so what we are going to consider, we are going to consider the space uh, L infinity uh, gamma uh, uh, G uh, <coughs> omega. 
So this is a, a set of uh, measurable maps from uh, G to omega, uh, which are also gamma equivalents. So F uh, gamma G is equal to gamma F of G uh, almost everywhere for gamma in gamma. Well, so, so, uh, so the ultimate goal would be to show that uh, uh, this uh, set of functions, uh, this set of maps, contain, contain the fi uh, contains a constant function. Uh, and uh, that's uh, we cannot really do uh, immediately. Uh, well, maybe first uh, uh, let me say uh, so. Uh, well, uh, yeah, so, so uh, I mean, uh, I guess it, it just uh, uh, indicates uh, that, uh, like in the usual infinity space, we identify to functions if they, are, if they are equal almost everywhere. Right, so, so, so there is, uh, uh, yeah, it's not really needed because the image is inside uh, omega anyway. But, uh, what, what is G SLM? Ah, yeah, G, uh, G is SLM, yes, yes, so, so that's, that's G. And capital N doesn't appear. Uh, yeah, yeah, capital N doesn't appear. Uh, yeah, so, so actually for, for the rest of the argument, I would like to think about uh, this action as action of gamma, uh, and N is contained uh, in the kernel of the action. So, so at least for now, let's forget about N, and just uh, think about uh, uh, this as being action of gamma. Uh, yeah, so, so there is a space of function that we want to show that uh, there exists uh, uh, a function which is constant almost everywhere. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, so then uh, maybe also I should say uh, what is uh, um, uh, topology on uh, the space. So, so the topology would be uh, uh, usually star uh, topology. So, so more explicitly, it would be defined by uh, the family of the norms uh, which are indexed by, say, uh, uh, alpha phi. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so a couple uh, this map with uh, L1 function on G. So, so there would be a, a collection of norms uh, on B, which defines topology on B. times uh, uh, L1 function. So here, uh, phi is uh, any L1 function in G. And uh, uh, here we have a collection of uh, norms, uh, which defines uh, topology on B. So, uh, and uh, yeah, maybe uh, uh, another uh, small point. Uh, uh, well, actually, it would be uh, possibly needed in the proof later on. So, uh, so originally, omega is not assumed to be separable, but uh, uh, because uh, 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 gamma is countable, uh, so one can actually reduce the proof to uh, omega being separable. But uh, let, let don't worry about it uh, now. So, so also uh, without. Uh, loss of generality, uh, omega, uh, uh, omega is uh, separable. Uh, so, um, uh, okay, so we have this nice topology, and uh, uh, so because uh, uh, the target space is uh, compact, uh, so, so we know that uh, this uh, set of function is also compact. Uh, Space, how, how can 
Yeah, it's a convex uh, set. So you have a set of maps from uh, G to, uh, to this convex oh, set. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right, so it's usual, uh, you know, key kind of uh, compactness uh, argument. Uh, so it's compact. Uh, and, uh, and also, uh, 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 there is an action of G on the space, which is just, uh, we can act uh, on, on the right. So, so if I have function f, uh, then uh, I can get function x f of x times g. So there is a natural action of g. Uh, okay, so uh, is it clear that it's not empty? Uh, so so there are. Let's see. I mean, one can start with. Uh, uh, you can uh, pick a point and then just transport it by gamma, right? Uh, somehow, uh, you you uh, like in this induced representation construction, you define a, a function to be constant on fundamental domain and transported by uh, by gamma. So yeah, so, so it's, uh, maybe I should also say it's uh, compact and uh, no name. And then the, the integral is, is it clear that it's a uh, phi is L1? Okay. Yeah, so it's... Uh, F of so, so it's... Uh, uh, no, no, it's, uh, so here we're just uh, looking on uh, all uh, possible bounded, uh, I mean, not even bounded, it's uh, functions with... Uh, uh, there is no assumptions on integral, actually. Sorry. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No phi is integral, and the omega is convert and f of g alpha is bounded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so those guys would be. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's. Uh, okay, so, uh, so then, uh, yeah, so we have a natural action of g. Uh, so, so g, uh, g is not amenable. Uh, so, uh, so we cannot really say that there is a G fixed point, but at least what we can say is that, uh, well, we can pick uh, the biggest possible amenable subgroup in G. So, so let me uh, take B to be uh, uh, the group of upper triangular matrices inside uh, G. So, uh, so it's built, it's a, it's a soluble group. It's built uh, as extensions of abelian groups. So, so this group uh, B is amenable. And so, so at least we know uh, that uh, uh, this space uh, contains, uh, contains a B, uh, uh, a B invariant, uh, a B fixed, uh, Uh, B fixed back. So, uh, yeah, so, so now what we got uh, is, um, um, uh, well, uh, so I'm cheating a little bit, it's almost everywhere, but uh, 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 ultimately what one gets, one gets a, a map from G factor B to uh, omega uh, with the property that F gamma y uh, is equal to gamma f y almost everywhere for uh, almost everywhere for gamma gamma and gamma. So uh, so uh, okay. So uh, so now the next uh, uh, very important step in the proof is to understand uh, what what are those uh, uh, what are what are such measurable maps. So in other words, uh, we would like to classify. Uh, the, uh, the factors for the gamma action on uh, G factor B. And uh, so that's uh, another uh, very uh, beautiful theorem which was uh, uh, proven by uh, Margulis uh, along the way. Uh, and so, uh, so, okay, let's call it. Uh, Bullis factors here. So, so it's precisely about the uh, uh, classification of such uh, uh, such maps for uh, f uh, s above. Uh, uh, there exists a uh, uh, closed uh, subgroup P, which contains P. Uh, 
and uh, and there exists uh, alpha from say, omega to uh, g factor p uh, uh, gamma invariant uh, measurable. Is that uh, uh, well, it's, it's, yeah, so omega would be basically this. So, so we have the following, uh, not really needed, but uh, we have the following uh, commutative diagram. So here we have just uh, the obvious uh, factor map and here we have the So it turns out that. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, so, so uh, yeah, so, so because it's almost everywhere. So, so right, so there is uh, some measure here, and uh, which measure do I take? I take uh, so, so here there is a, a natural uh, well, it's not invariant, but there is a, uh, uh, a smooth measure here, a smooth probability measure here, and then if it's pushed down here, there would be also measure here. And, and so, uh, so, so it's really up to defined up to this measure. Right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so it's uh, 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 so, so it's me measurable isomorphism, uh, right? It's uh, only uh, so there is uh, somehow in the statement it's implicit that there is some measure here which comes from from this uh, image. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so. Uh, yeah, so now, uh, uh, so that's uh, really uh, almost the end of the proof. So, so let me uh, uh, finish the proof assuming, uh, assuming this uh, uh, theorem. So, uh, so what do we get now? So, uh, so now uh, we know that omega, uh, so the action of uh, gamma on omega, so the action of gamma on <coughs> omega uh, is uh, measurably uh, isomorphic to uh, action of gamma on uh, g factor p. But uh, let's come back and recall that uh, uh, it's not only action of gamma, but action of gamma factor n. So, uh, so what we get is that uh, n uh, would act uh, uh, trivially on, on g, g factor p. So, so for, almost, uh, for almost every g, uh, for almost every g factor p in uh, GP, uh, n g p uh, is equal to GP. Well, because n acts trivially on the left, it has to act trivially on the right. So, uh, so in particular, we get that p contains uh, all, uh, well, almost all conjugates. Uh, but in fact, all conjugates uh, by taking closure. So we get this, which is uh, uh, infinite uh, normal, uh, infinite closed normal subgroup. Subgroup. Uh, so, so in fact, P uh, has to be uh, G. So p has to be g, and then uh, omega has to be a point. And so, uh, so in the end of the day, uh, 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 well, I have to measure zero. Uh, so, so in the end of the day, uh, we produced uh, an invariant uh, point, uh, a gamma invariant uh, point uh, in, in omega. So basically, that uh, finishes the proof. But of course, uh, I still have to uh, uh, give the proof of uh, the factors here. So that's what uh, we're going to do in, in the next lecture. Uh, uh, so any questions? Uh, OK, so then uh, we can continue after the break.